Well, over the past few days, the Education Secretary has come under fire on Capitol Hill for defending a proposal to cut nearly $18 million in funding for the Special Olympics. It was a difficult sell, no doubt, to lawmakers, and late this afternoon, President Trump stepped in. I've been to the Special Olympics. I think it's incredible, and I just authorized a funding. I heard about it this morning. I have uh, overridden my people. We're funding the Special Olympics. Total reversal there. Now, the money won't be cut uh, after all. Uh, shortly after the president spoke, the education secretary released this statement, quote, I am pleased and grateful the president and I see eye to eye on this issue and that he has decided to fund our Special Olympics grant. This is funding I have fought for behind the scenes over the last several years. Okay. Sounds very different than what she's been saying for several days. Doesn't make any sense because, keep in mind, DeVos has proposed funding cuts for the Special Olympics for the past two years before this current effort and lawmakers rejected it. So this is the third time. This time she didn't even know how many kids with special needs could have been impacted. Here's what happened when uh, Democratic uh, Wisconsin Congressman uh, Mark Pocan asked her about that on Tuesday. The cuts to Special Olympics. Do you know how many kids um, are gonna be affected by that cut, Madam Secretary? Um, Ms. Mr. Pocan, uh, let me just say again, we had made we had to make some okay. difficult decisions with this budget. Again, this is a question of how many kids, not about I the budget. I don't know the number okay. of kids. It's two hundred and seventy-two thousand kids. I, that's all. Okay, I'll answer it for you. That's okay. No problem. It's two hundred seventy-two thousand kids I think that are affected. Is an awesome organization, one that is well supported by the philanthropic sector as well. Sure. So the grilling didn't end there. She faced more questions about the proposal today on Capitol Hill. So she was still defending it before the president made his announcement. Look what happened when CNN's Ryan Nobles tried to get answers from her. Madam Secretary, you said today that you were not the person that proposed this funding change. Can you explain who in your administration did? <laughs> Madam Secretary, have you spoken to the president about this at all? Mm -hmm. If there's some uh, misunderstanding, Madam Secretary, this is your opportunity to, to explain it to us. Hopefully we'll see it this afternoon. Are you concerned about the supporters of the Special Olympics that are upset with the decision to remove their funding? Oh my God, that was so painful and awkward. I, I loved it how the camera, after focusing on the back of her head, the camera person moves around and then she's looking at, I assume that's someone who works with her for some sort of like saving. But the other person was just like, mm -mm, I'm not saying anything either. That's an epic non-response. I mean, that's a wait for the, that's not even a like, uh, That was just no risk. That was something. I'd like to let's, let's keep that on hold for later use. We'll just bring it up every now and then. Not long after that, the president said, quote, I've overridden my people. We're funding the Special Olympics, unquote. And then Ms. DeVos was like, yay, I wanted that all along. Uh, and that's welcomed. Obviously, it's all welcomed by the Special Olympians and those who run the program, which was founded by the late Eunice, uh, Kennedy Shriver more than five decades ago. It's a program about much more than winning medals and sports ribbons, of course. The athletes also gain courage and self-respect, new friends, and all the volunteers and all those cheering the stands gain an important lesson in uh, tolerance and inclusion. Joining us now is Tim Shriver, the son of Mrs. Shriver. He's continuing his mom's mission. He's the chairman of the Special Olympics. He joins me now. Uh, Tim, first of all, uh, congratulations are in order for this happening. What, what do you make Thank of you. the president's reversal on the proposed cuts after Ms. DeVos has been arguing about this now for days defending it. Well, I think it's a great moment for the country, honestly. I think it's a moment of positivity, the likes of which we haven't seen in years. People from all walks of life, both parties, heartland and coastland, uh, volunteers, young people, parents, uh, business leaders, all standing up, sports figures, saying that these are American values that we believe in, that we uh, are committed to and that we will not step down from. And I think the president responded to that in a very positive way and recognized how important these values are in this country right now. 
And I think we should celebrate the fact that we have a moment of uh, unity in the country. And let's maybe build upon that, not just for people with special needs, although that's obviously critically important, but maybe for uh, broader conversations about what unites us, because in the end of the day, that's what this ended up being a conversation about. The, the, before the administration changed course, part of what Secretary DeVos' argument was that the Special Olympics doesn't need federal funding because of what she described as robust support from private donations. Is that accurate? The funding cuts she proposed, um, uh, from what I understand, would have cut programs for special needs students around the country. Well, first of all, uh, I think people don't understand that the, the traditional Special Olympics program is privately funded. This particular initiative is a school-based initiative. It's trying to teach inclusion, teach empathy, teach uh, connection to kids in schools in the country. We're in about 6,000 schools. We're introducing what we call unified sport, where kids with and without special needs get to play on teams, learn from each other, become teammates, recognize that everybody matters. That's awesome. I mean, this is such a fundamental American lesson. Uh, and I think people are responding to it right now where we feel maybe that lesson's under threat. This is all about being able to look into your friend's eye, you know, and learn from the child who has Down syndrome, learn from the child who has autism. Uh, when you're in sixth grade or eighth grade or 10th grade, uh, learn this most profound, I, I mean, I dare say it's an American lesson. We are a country founded on at least the hope that we can build a country where everybody matters no matter what. And that's what we're trying to teach in schools. That's why we're getting funded by the Department of Education. And that's why we want to grow that effort. We're, as I say, 6,000 schools. There's 100,000 schools in this country, every one of them. The families in those schools, the teachers in those schools, the young people in those schools are starving for positive messages and for ways to find their purpose in big ideas like these, why not celebrate that, grow it, uh, partner with the private sector, philanthropic giving, uh, to make these kinds of lessons the norm in our nation's schools? I mean, it shows my own ignorance on this. I didn't realize that this was something that, that you've had working in schools and that it, you're in 6,000 schools. Um, it just sounds like a remarkable program. The whole idea of pairing uh, pairing people with different abilities together and learning from each other. I mean, what's more important than that? The, I mean, it's the future of our movement, Anderson. We call it the inclusion revolution. What we're saying, and I think what the country said in these last 48 hours, and it's really quite remarkable to parents who have kids with special needs, to people who have differences, uh, they heard a message loud and clear, this country cares about you. Mm. This country believes in you, this country values you, this country believes you're important. This country will fight for you. And that's a lesson yeah. and a message that so for so many days and weeks and months, those families never hear. Yeah. But they heard it here, they heard it now. We're committed to you as a country. Uh, they're, we're not just to a program. Of course, I believe in the Special Olympics movement and the work we're doing in schools is critical. Uh, the social and emotional development of children is critical. Yeah. Right now, critical in our schools, and it's growing. So, um, you know, we're, we're, at a, we're at a moment here to celebrate, but for, for all those young people, life is still very difficult. Yeah. If you're different, it's still tough. Yeah. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, Tim, uh, I appreciate you being on, and I uh, appreciate all the work you're doing. It's extraordinary. Thank you. What's Thanks for having me.